Roman Reigns is focused on his Sami Zayn problem, but in my opinion, you should be more concerned about the Cody Rhodes problem because Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns for the first time came face to face tonight, guys, on Friday night SmackDown. Welcome back to Fog Wrestling. Like I said, we are on the road to WrestleMania 39. We had tonight SmackDown to get through, and I actually thought it was a decent show I thought it was not bad whatsoever and we finally had the confrontation between Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns obviously Cody Rhodes won the Royal Rumble about four weeks ago five weeks ago now and he is only now coming face to face with the person he will be challenging for the undisputed universal title at WrestleMania it feels like everything in wrestling these days is just done to a slow build. I mean, like, why the hell is Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns not coming face to face the night after WrestleMania? Why have they waited until now? It just I just I just don't understand the new current WWE progression where it's like everything is slowed down it's like everything is slow 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 and it's pretty much I think we're going to be going into like the last couple of weeks before anything truly interesting happens but it is frustrating I just don't quite understand that like why the hell can't we get a longer build up why are we having to wait until four weeks until Wrestlemania before Roman Reigns pun intended even acknowledges Cody Rhodes you know I, I just think it's dumb I think it should have been done earlier and I get it Roman Reigns has had to focus with Sami Zayn he's got the whole Kevin Owens thing but it, again at the same time it does feel a bit strange Roman Reigns is more worried about Jey Uso where he is Roman Reigns is more worried about the Sami Zayn problem or the Kevin Owens problem it's like come on you're, you're defending your titles against Cody Rhodes the guy that's been unstoppable since joining the WWE, when are they eventually going to turn Roman Reigns' focus from the bloodline and from Sami Uso? And if, when are they going to have Roman Reigns start focusing on Cody Rhodes? Because in my opinion, his title is under real threat at WrestleMania. But we kick off the show then with the bloodline. Roman Reigns comes out alongside Jimmy Uso, Solo Sokoa and Paul Heyman. Jey Uso isn't there, of course, the bloodline get in the ring, Reigns asks Washington DC to acknowledge him, but before he can say anything else, there's only, there's more than one royal family in wrestling, eh? Cody Rhodes comes out, he comes out, gets a big pop, fans are chatting Cody, Cody gets in the ring, and he tells Roman Reigns that he doesn't think he needs um, anyone else here. He wants to speak to Reigns man to man unless Roman Reigns feels like he needs a bloodline by his side. So Reigns then tells Heyman to leave. Heyman takes Sokoa and Jimmy Uso with him. Then Reigns asks Cody if he feels more comfortable now that he's one-on-one. -on -one. Reigns says, let's get more comfortable. Reigns says Cody might not like this, but he's going to do it anyway. Roman Reigns lays both belts flat out in the middle of the ring. Then he asks Cody Rhodes, have you, have you ever won this one? <laughs> have you ever challenged for this one? And obviously Cody Rhodes is standing there. He's never done any of this. Then Reigns asks him, have you ever even been a fan to WrestleMania? Which, of course, the answer is no. Although, what I didn't really like is I felt as if Roman Reigns was belittling Cody for not re main event in a WrestleMania. The fact is, main event in a WrestleMania just isn't for everyone. Just because you haven't main event at a WrestleMania, it doesn't mean that you're shit. It's like a small elite group that get to main event a WrestleMania. So, again... I, I get it. I thought the thing with the belts was good, but when he was trying to like downplay Cody Rhodes as if he hasn't main event at rest, I, I mean, I get that, but most people haven't. If you look at the current roster, not many people on this ro Who's main event at WrestleMania on the current roster? You've got Roman Reigns, you've got Brock Lesnar, and I think that's it. Seth Rollins doesn't count. He was a cash-in. I, I legit can't think of anyone else I mean, maybe, I think Drew McIntyre might have main event at the... Did he main event the COVID mania? I'm not counting that. 
Of course, you had the uh, Becky Lynch main event that with Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair. But the point being is, I mean, from the male standpoint, barely anyone has main event at WrestleMania. So uh, Roman Reigns trying to trying to, uh, you know, downplay Cody Rhodes for not main event in Mania, I think is irrelevant. The fact is, Cody's going to main event this WrestleMania, so that's the most important thing. Um, Cody brings up the 915-day title reign. He congratulates Roman Reigns. Um, Rhodes says that for some... He talks about a mountain, an impossible mountain, but he says nothing's impossible for him. He says that no one expected him to, um, you know, become the, the best member of Legacy. No one expected him to overcome Stardust, and no one expected 10,000 fans to come and join his little indie show. So he mentioned All In, and he got a pop for the crowd, and then Cody basically says that he, he can he can overcome stuff and he's gonna he's gonna it might seem impossible but he's gonna win the belt at WrestleMania. Then Reigns went on to talk about Dusty Rhodes and Reigns says he's been groomed since he's a kid but not just by his own father but by Cody Rhodes' father. Then Reigns brings up all these Dusty Rhodes stories. He says him and Dusty spent a lot of time. He says the dream helped them get over it. He done a Dusty Rhodes impersonation and I thought it was pretty good He's like, oh, you got it, oh, you got it. Uh, I thought it was pretty good for Roman Reigns. So, yeah, the Dusty impersonation. Thumbs up for that. Reigns says he wishes Dusty was here. He says that when he was with Ray, Reigns says when he was with Dusty, they used to talk a lot. But he says Dusty never spoke about Cody. So, yeah, trying to, <laughs> trying to get under Cody's nerves. He said he said nothing about him. He says D Dusty Rhodes never mentioned Cody. So, yeah, trying to play, uh, trying to downplay Cody there. Uh, then Cody says that, uh, you know, the, him winning at WrestleMania isn't about, he doesn't need, it's not about him wanting to win it or about him proving something to do it. He says it's becoming a necessity. He has to win at WrestleMania because he is Dusty's actual kid and he can't let, you know, a, a made up Dusty kid and Roman Reigns leave Mania with the belt because Reigns says. He is the son that Dusty always wanted. So Cody Rhodes says now he has to win. And he, Cody Rhodes says that the better man will win. And he shakes Roman Reigns' hand. I mean, I thought it was a good promo. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, they're bringing up Dusty a lot. I mean, I guess, why not? Dusty did kind of train that, that NXT generation. So, I mean, it, it makes sense. And it's, I mean, it's nice to see them bringing up Dusty and being a bit unique with it rather than just, oh, Dusty's dead, your father's dead. It's nice to see Roman Reigns, you know, um, implementing his interactions and, and obviously his history with Dusty Rhodes. So, I mean, I like it. I thought it was all right. Then we get Liv Morgan versus Rhea Ripley. Liv Morgan says that a lot of people think she's crazy. A lot of people think she's, um, you know, insane for taking on Rhea Ripley. But she says a lot of people think it's dangerous, but watch me anyway. So I guess this is the gimmick that they're going with, that Liv Morgan's a daredevil. She's willing to do anything. She takes on Rhea Ripley, and Rhea Ripley pretty much dominates the match. Uh, Ripley hits the riptide in the middle of the ring, but instead of going for the cover, she locks in an inverted clover leaf and gets Liv to tap out. So... Rhea Ripley debuting a new submission before WrestleMania, so I guess this gives her another way she can possibly beat Charlotte Flair, and I guess now both her and Charlotte Flair have submissions going into their WrestleMania match. I'm really not bothered about the match at WrestleMania, but, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, we come back from the break, the bloodline are in the backstage area. Paul Heyman is talking about Dusty Rhodes when Jimmy Ray, when uh, Roman Reigns asks Jimmy if he's talked to Jey Uso, Jimmy says that he has. Reigns asks him what's going on. Jimmy says, you know who Jay is. He's a hothead. He needs some time. Roman Reigns doesn't appreciate this. Roman Reigns asks, how much time does he need? Jimmy says he spoke with Jay this morning. He's doing better than yesterday and the day before that. And he will let Jay know. Reigns says he's running out of patience. Jimmy says he will let Jay know. But Reigns says, I'm not running out of patience with Jay. I'm losing patience with you. So Jimmy nods and he 
guess he says he, he looks a little bit concerned he says he'll let Jay know uh, a bit strange here I mean the bloodline is imploding the bloodline is like uh, they're trying to like tell this story the bloodline's falling apart Roman Reigns is losing control I mean wh why would Roman Reigns want to follow it with Jimmy if he's all if he's so concerned that Jay's going to leave why is Roman Reigns taking his frustrations out on Jimmy doesn't make a lot of sense to me now later on in the show it seems like he's almost trying to defend the Usos but is he's like he's pissed off with Jimmy I just don't really get that I mean surely he should try and keep Jimmy closer to him he should try and reel Jimmy in instead of you know throwing Jimmy under the bus but I mean whatever it was all right we then get the progressive match flow we see what happened last week with Rey Mysterio and Karrion Cross. we then get Dominic and Rhea backstage Santos Escobar interrupts him. Dominic asks if there is a problem. Escobar says that Rey Mysterio should have punched Dominic in the face, but he understands why Rey couldn't because Rey is his father. But he says Santos can, and he says he spoke with Adam Pearce. Adam Pearce has made the match official, and Santos says he's going to teach Dominic a lesson tonight. And he says if Dominic is half the man he says he is, he will meet Escobar out there. Hombre to hombre. Escobar then blows a kiss at Rhea Ripley and walks off. Ripley looks concerned at Dominic as we go to a commercial. We come back for the commercial. We get a look at some people in the Special Olympics. So uh, apparently we're having the World Games in Berlin in June. Special Olympics. We get to see some of the Americans that are going to be at the Special Olympics. I've got some wee WWE theme playing in the background. And I thought it was strange because you've got Santo Santos Escobar making his entrance. But the focus is on like Special Olympics people. And they've got WWE music playing. They've got this like wee weird theme playing instead of having Santos Escobar's music playing. And I don't know, it just made Santos Escobar look like a jobber. And Santos Escobar's got a really good theme as well. So disappointing um, for him not to have his music played or whatever. Then Dominic comes out. They have the match. I mean, it was a decent match. I think Dominic, he's not only improving as a character. I think he is getting better in the ring too. I think Dominic has improved a lot in the ring. Um, but what I didn't like was the finish of this match. Dominic has brass knuckles. This distracts the referee. Ripley then pulls Escobar to the outside and hits a riptide on the floor. She then rolls him in and Dominic hits a frog splash for the win. One, two, three. Dominic beats Escobar, but it's mainly because Rhea Ripley, I mean, Rhea Ripley, who was already in a match earlier tonight against Lynn Morgan, pulls es Escobar to the side and hits a riptide. And again, it's just more women beating up men. It's WWE portraying women as more dominant than men. Like, why the fuck is, is Rhea Ripley, you know, manhandling Santos Escobar? Honestly, man, this is garbage. And speaking of Escobar, where's his crew? Where's Legado del Fantasma? Why is he outnumbered tonight? Where's 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 Selena Vega? If if men can't defend themselves against women, where's the female in that group helping Santos Escobar? Makes no sense. As soon as they turn Escobar face, he has to like not have his faction anywhere near him because you know being a face you have to be solo. You can't have <laughs> numbers advantage, but it's just lame. I think I think Legado del Fantasma and Santos Escobar's main roster push call up has been a disgrace so far. I think the the faction's good. I didn't agree with them adding in Selena Vega. And it seems to be going nowhere. And it's very disappointing because in NXT they were good, but in SmackDown they're a fucking irrelevant. And who knows, they might even be split up. Because we haven't it's been a while since we've seen um Santos Escobar. Ever since he was interacting with Ray, he's pretty much just left the rest of them behind. So I mean, I don't know what's happening. I did enjoy the match, I thought it was okay, but the ending pretty poor in my opinion and it's just so annoying again so frustrating to see Rhea Ripley be the difference maker and essentially Rhea Ripley being the one to defeat uh, Santos Escobar for me I hate that I hate this whole women's superiority thing in wrestling it sucks we then get a video for Sami Zayn, him arriving to the arena earlier, just basically calling out Solo Sokoa, calling out Jimmy Uso, and he says that he will not stop until the bloodline go down. The fans in the background chant Sami. So uh, yeah, this basically sets up tonight's main event. Then Drew McIntyre comes out, 
he says that he hasn't had a re he's not in a WrestleMania match yet, and this is um, you know it's it's like disgraceful he's not got a mania opponent yet, and I, I hate this storyline that they do with people. Last year they done it with Seth Rollins. It's like. They come out and they don't have a WrestleMania match, and they're concerned that they don't have a WrestleMania match. If you if you don't have a WrestleMania match by this stage, maybe the fact is you're not very good. Maybe you don't deserve to be on the card. Why does Drew McIntyre come out, and why is he just insinuating? Why is he assuming he deserves and that he should be on the card? That's not how it works. You shouldn't just be on the WrestleMania card. You should make yourself get on the card. You don't just come out and ask for a match or wait to be put in a match. If you're worthy of being on the Mania card, you will be on it. And if you're not worthy, then you will not be on it. I hate this fucking gimmick now where people come out and it's like, oh, it's WrestleMania, I need to be there. Who am I going to face? I mean, let's be honest, Drew McIntyre's doing nothing at the moment. And if Drew McIntyre wasn't on the WrestleMania card, would it be that much of a disaster? No, it honestly wouldn't. It wouldn't even feel like a big deal. I mean, where do we draw the line? Who is currently not booked for Mania that definitely should be on it. Apart from, like, the people involved in the Bloodline feud. It just, I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. But then Drew McIntyre calls out Gunther. I mean, why didn't he just do this at the start? Why didn't he just come out and call out Gunther? Why did he have to talk this crap about he's not on the WrestleMania card yet? I, I, I hate it, man. It's like everyone feels entitled. Everyone thinks they should just be on WrestleMania when WrestleMania is for the grandest stage of them all. The best of the best. Not everybody is worthy. Not everybody should just be guaranteed a match at Mania. So I didn't like this entitled Drew McIntyre shite, but he calls it Gunther but instead he is confronted by Seamus Seamus is furious Seamus stands in the middle of the ring Seamus says Drew knew how much he wanted Gunther at Wrestlemania and uh, now he's out here calling it Gunther uh, Drew says that um, I didn't realise you were my parent I didn't realise I had to ask your permission to wipe my arse Seamus says, yeah, you're not my parent, but I thought you were my brother, and I, I guess not, I guess you're just a backstabbing bastard, so now they're swearing, obviously Seamus and Drew think they're edgy now, they say a couple of swear words, so all of a sudden, this is like the greatest promo ever, I'm sorry, that's not how it works, I hate how in wrestling nowadays, people do the odd swear word, and they think they're great. Like Daniel Bryan on Dynamite last week, he, he, he swore and he thought he was he thought he was the greatest thing ever. No, I mean you have to be good. Just because you say, you say swear words doesn't make you edgy, right? Doesn't make it a great promo. Um, Drew says, "Okay, if they're telling the truth, sometimes the truth hurts." And the truth is, Sheamus had his chance against Gunther and he lost twice. So Sheamus and Drew are looking at each other, it looks like they're going to come to blows, then LA Knight comes out, let me talk to ya! LA Knight is in the building, LA Knight says he wants a shot at the Intercontinental title, he says that Drew and Sheamus have had every opportunity, and he says you can't have an LA WrestleMania without LA Knight. Then the New Day come out, and basically just ruin this segment. I mean, you've got Drew McIntyre and Sheamus, two big physical guys, two serious guys, you know, two guys that will go at it. You've got Ellie Knight coming out, who looks like a star, and then you've got the fucking New Day coming out, and it's like, they, they just bring this segment down, 100%. And they make fun about the fact that Ellie Knight thinks he should be at WrestleMania, when in reality, he can't even win a match on SmackDown, which is fair enough, to be honest. Again, if you're a jobber, if you can't win on Raw or SmackDown, then why the hell should you be at WrestleMania? Then, um, Karrion Cross comes out with Scarlett, we get a brawl, Drew McIntyre does a, a, a dive to the outside, Karrion Cross throws Sheamus into the ring post, Sheamus falls to the outside, Karrion Cross celebrates in the inside, and we have, um, we have, uh, that, that's it really, we get Sheamus on the outside and Karrion Cross celebrates. And then they announce a fatal five-way match for next week, so should be, uh, no, number one contender, whoever wins, faces Gunther, so I mean, that should be good, but I guess we'll see. Cross stares into the camera, and he says, TikTok. Boring. I don't like Cross. I don't think he'll win next week. It'll probably be Drew. 
Or maybe they might even do like a double finish where Drew and Sheamus kind of get a pin at the same time. I mean, that's something that they could do. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Also, something else that happened, by the way, earlier after, this annoyed me. So after Dominic beats Santos Escobar, he, he takes the Ray mask and he starts ripping it. Ray comes out, he wants the mask. Dominic says, I'll give you the mask if you hit me. Ray's like, look, I'm not going to hit you, son. I just want the mask. Dominic then drops the mask and then punches Ray. And the whole time, Santos Escobar was like in the ring looking on. I mean, why the fuck is he not coming to the aid of Mysterio? Why didn't he come to help Mysterio? Why didn't he, he come up the ramp? to stop Dominic from ripping the mask. If the mask means so much to Escobar, why the hell is he just sitting in the ring watching this happen? Again, it's like in wrestling, if someone's in the ring, there's like an invisible barricade and they can't leave the ring. It's dumb. It's absolutely dumb. I didn't get that. I thought it was, I thought it was lame. Honestly, Dominic drops Rey Mysterio. Dominic rips the mask and Santos Escobar just sits in the ring and watches it happen because Santos Escobar he was back on his feet before Ray even came out Santos Escobar was like leaning over the ropes and calling out Dominic so it's not like he was laid out it's not like he was selling the injury or he was selling the finish if he was selling the finish that would have made sense because then he wouldn't have been there to stop Dominic from ripping the mask or to help Rey Mysterio but he was back on his feet and all, all the time, whole time he done nothing. So, whatever. Uh, we see a brawl from er earlier where it's Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler, Tegan Knox, and Natalia. They get in a brawl. Apparently, Ronda Rousey's hurt her arm. She comes out with a sling on her arm. Apparently, she's using the black belt that she won in judo to put her arm in a sling. And Wade Barrett says she might have a broken arm. Really? Broken arm? Are you serious? Ronda comes out selling an arm injury. She's supposed to be this MMA person. Her whole fucking thing is the arm bar. Yet, she comes out with a sore arm just because she got attacked backstage. Thought this was lame. Anyway, it's Shayna Baszler versus Tegan Knox. yet Baszler comes out with Rousey to Rousey's music and then Tegan Knox comes out with Natalia to Natalia's music. I mean, what a way to just say that these two are bums coming out to the other person's music. What was the point of bringing Tegan Knox back, by the way? Un unattractive, just nothing special about her. Fucking flabby. Just an average bloody indie wrestler. She, looks, she reminds me of someone that would be on like AEW Dark or maybe get an odd appearance on Rampage. There's nothing about Tegan Knox. It's just another garbage return that Triple H brought back from NXT. And honestly, she loses in about two minutes here to Shayna Baszler. What was the point? You tell me. I don't know. But she taps out with the armbar. Really lame. Uh, then we get Gunther backstage. He says it's an absolute disgrace that a man like him has been kept waiting by so-called leadership Adam Pearce. Uh, he's just one month away from WrestleMania and they still haven't identified the challenge. But don't worry, it's a fatal four-way match next week, Gunther, so you'll find out who your challenger is. But at the end of the day, your sacred ring, your sacred promos, they're pretty boring, right? I mean, a lot of people can pretend that they love Gunther. I personally find Gunther boring. I don't hate him by any means, but he isn't interesting, in my opinion. Speaking of interesting, Bobby Lashley, Big Bobby comes out gets in the ring, he says that he wants to see Bray Wyatt face to face because he's a man he isn't interested in playing little get kids games like the muscle man <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think the muscle man's a kids game, I've never heard of a kids game called the muscle man it was, <laughs> you know, it was just a made up song or whatever Bray Wyatt done <laughs> it was kind of corny but funny at the same time I guess, let's do the muscle man dance, I mean what the fuck is this shit seriously um, anyway, Lashley says of Wyatt is man enough, he'll come out and meet him in the ring. Uh, Bray Wyatt's music hits, but it's not Bray Wyatt that comes out, it's Uncle Howdy. He comes out from behind, he attacks Lashley, he gets the beat down on him, but Lashley then hits a big clothesline. Lashley spikes him to the mat. Lashley then takes off the jacket, he means business. When Lashley takes off the suit, you know someone's about to get their ass kicked. He's going to hit a spear, but before he can, the lights go out. And when the lights come back on, Uncle Howdy is gone. Uncle Howdy is no longer there. And then the Bray Wyatt logo flashes on the screen. So no Bray Wyatt tonight. 
We get Uncle Howdy instead. Honestly, what are they doing with it? This Bray Wyatt return is fucking all over the place. So he comes back with a new character. Like, then they introduce this Uncle Howdy shite. Then it's like he's back to, like, the Firefly Funhouse Bray Wyatt. And then they tease Alexa Bliss rejoining Bray Wyatt. And then Alexa Bliss just disappears. And we don't see anything to do with Alexa Bliss. And now it's back to Bray Wyatt. And then we don't even get Bray Wyatt tonight. We got Uncle Howdy instead. I mean, what is happening with Bray? Is it a new character? Is it The Fiend? Is it the Firefly Funhouse? Is it six different personalities? Like, what are we getting? Honestly, I do not know. It's whole, the whole thing is just dragged out and boring. Honestly, it is. This Bray Wyatt stuff absolutely sucks. There's like no continuality with it, man. Honestly, it just is it's boring. I don't like it. I do not like it. But anyway, uh, Bobby Lashley, let's hope that he wins at Wrestlemania uh, then we go backstage again it's Jimmy, he's talking to Jay but he tells Reigns that Jimmy says he needs more time Ray, Reigns asks Jimmy if Jay really said that and Jimmy says no, he says that he, Jay, Jay said he wants Reigns to leave him the hell alone Reigns then says he doesn't understand how Jay could do this to him and today after everything they've done for him Reigns says he blames it on Sami Zayn ever since Sami Zayn came in um, Jay started getting you know selfish or whatever that's when the greed came into it Reigns says that he needs Jay to fix this problem once and for all he wants him to take Sami Zayn out tonight and then he says go with Sol Sokoa so those two leave for the match and then Reigns says that uh, he says to Heyman backstage if Jay isn't back in the bloodline in one week he's not going to blame Jay He's going to blame Jimmy. And Heyman looks worried. Again, I don't understand it. Why is Reigns... Uh, the bloodline is already looking a bit fragile. If GSO has got one foot out the door, if GSO is going to leave the bloodline, why is Reigns also practically going to like blame Jimmy and kick him out? It just doesn't make any sense. One minute you've got Reigns trying to almost like divide the Usos it sounds like he's trying to turn Jimmy against Jay but then the next minute he's basically saying to Heyman that he doesn't even blame Jay he blames Jimmy so it's like Roman Reigns is just making this divide in the bloodline even worse honestly I, I don't get it I mean at this stage it's just going to be Reigns, Solo and uh, Paul Heyman that are left but we'll see we get the main offence, Sami Zayn versus Solo Sokoa. Solo Sokoa has not been pinned or submitted since turning up on the main roster. And that didn't happen tonight. Sami goes for a halluva kick. Jimmy pushes Sokoa out of the way. Then Sokoa hits the Simone Spike for the 1-2-3. After the match, they start beating up Sami Zayn. They wrap a chair around his neck. Solo Sokoa is going to go for like the Rikishi butt splash or whatever in the corner. But Jimmy says no, he wants to do it. Jimmy wastes too much time. Time, though Sami Zayn jumps up, throws the chair at Solo's face, then he dodges a splash for Jimmy and Sami Zayn hits a halluva kick on Jimmy. Sami Zayn picks up the chair, he's about to take it Jimmy but Sokolo gets back up so Sami Zayn throws the chair in Sokolo's face again and then escapes the ring. As Jimmy and Solo are seething in the ring, Sami Zayn manages to get into the crowd and make his escape. As Reigns and Heyman are watching backstage, they don't look too happy. The crowd are chatting Sami. I, Jimmy is um, angry in the ring, disappointed in the ring. And Reigns is disappointed, obviously, backstage that Jimmy couldn't take care of Sami Zayn. I thought it was a little bit weak. We had... We had Jimmy about to take out Sammy. It, it felt like this dragged on a little bit and I was expecting something to happen. Like I was expecting Jey Uso to appear, Kevin Owens to appear. I was expecting like someone to make a save to like advance the story, but nothing happened. It was literally Jay just wasted too much time and then Sammy managed to get up and escape. So again, a bit, a bit cheap there. I was expecting something a bit more interesting for the ending, but we didn't get that. We just got Sami Zayn managing to escape because Jimmy took too long to do the move. So yeah, a slightly disappointing finish in my opinion. I was hoping that we would get Jey Uso and maybe he would help Sami Zayn. He would stand in between Zayn and Jimmy or else we would, I don't know, get something with Kevin Owens, or we, we would get something, I thought we would get something different from what we got, at the end, basically all we caught was Sami Zayn, <laughs> managing to outsmart 
Sokoa and Jimmy and then escape through the ring. So, yeah, that's it. I mean, a little bit disappointed with the ending, but overall, I thought SmackDown was okay. Uh, I enjoyed the Cody Rhodes Roman Reigns segment. Uh, it was some good stuff. I thought Dominic and Dominic and uh, what's his name? Santos Escobar was not bad. Uh, main event was decent. Some of the bloodline segments were all right. I guess Drew Sheamus. The promo wasn't horrible. Uh, it was it was an okay SmackDown. You know what, guys? I'm gonna give it. A, I'll give it a four out of ten. I thought it was all right. So I'm gonna give it your. Um, it was below par, but it wasn't horrible by any means. There was some decent stuff on it. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a Bret Hart four out of ten, guys. That's it. Catch us in the next one. Leave a like, leave a comment. Was WrestleMania four weeks away, man. Looking forward to it. But unfortunately, before then, we've got a pay per view called AEW Revolution. So uh, yeah, I'll probably have to watch that one. Not looking forward to it, but we'll see. I guess we'll find out if it's any good or not. Review will be on the channel. That's it, though, guys. Catch you in the next one. Till then, peace.